Luke 7 11 to 17, Women, Work and the Word, the Old Testament background for the story of Jesus raising the widow's son is miracles wrought by Elijah, 1 Kings 17 10 to 24, and Elijah, 2 Kings 4 18 to 37. Most Jews, and possibly Gentile Christians, of Jesus' day would know the stories of Elijah and Elisha in detail and would quickly understand how they relate to the story of Jesus raising the widow's son. The difference between the Elijah Elisha stories and the Jesus story is that both Elijah and Elisha had benefited from the hospitality of the respective mothers and were, in a sense, indebted. But there is no indication that Jesus ever saw the widow of Nen prior to this occasion where he raises her son from the dead. It is a companion story to the story of Jesus healing the centurion's servant, 7 to 1 to 10. Luke often pairs a story of a man with a story of a woman, and that is the case here with the male centurion and the female widow. In both stories, Jesus' word has great power, power to heal, even at a distance, and power to raise the dead. From the widow and now who celebrates the arrival of Jesus, 2, 37, to the widow who gives her few pennies to the temple treasury, 21 to 1 to 4, Luke narrates stories about widows more than any of the other three evangelists, see 4, 25 to 26, 18 to 1 to 8, 20, 46 to 47, also Acts 6, 1, 9, 36 to 42. As widows were one of the group's most needing community care according to Israel's scriptures, along with orphans and non-Israelites living in the land, see Deuteronomy 14, 29. So Luke highlights both the widow's need and Jesus' compassionate response to her situation. The credibility, continuity, and identity of Jesus are recognized only after the raising of the widow's son. Let us look at the particular story in Luke 7 11 to 17. The story is unique to Luke. In contrast to so many of the healing stories, the person in need of healing never asks for Jesus' help. This mournful mother does not seek Jesus out. Her faith is never commended. In fact, she never speaks aloud in this narrative. Instead, Luke writes that Jesus sees her and has compassion for her. Let's emphasize this for her. It is not the dead son who draws Jesus' compassion but his now bereft mother. When the groups meet at the city gate, we hear that the Lord is moved with compassion. This is the first time that Luke has used the word Lord in relation to Jesus. Jesus has compassion for this widow not just because she grieves the because his death meant a life of uncertainty and financial calamity for her. This is why Jesus is moved by her plight and tells her not to weep. Compassion describes the reaction of the Samaritan in Luke 10, 33 and the father in 1520. Both of these parables are unique to Luke, suggesting the high importance of compassion and mercy as qualities of the Lord and of his disciples. We might consider why the Lord is moved to compassion in this story. The reality of widows in the ancient world is life-threatening at worst, miserable most of the time. A concern for assisting widows throughout the Bible stems from their dire need. One might ask questions about dire need and compassion for present disciples. Jesus sees, is moved to compassion and acts, not allowing even death to stop him. It is compassion which moves Jesus to speak and to act. Compassion signifies literally, to suffer with, to assume or make ours the suffering of the other person, identifying oneself with the person, feeling the pain, the suffering. It is compassion which puts into action the power of Jesus, the power of life over death, the creative power. As Luke systematically connects the church's ministry to Jesus' own mission, we have the evangelist's mandate to exhort our churches to embrace compassionate ministry to the poor in Jesus' name. This reading engages a message of hope beyond the example of Jesus' healing power. Just as Jesus and man shared common experiences, so we too, as brothers and sisters of the Lord, will share in his resurrection. If we know of the faith of our loved one, we can have confidence that like Jesus, she or he too will be raised, 